Welcome back to another episode of Learn to Cook on a Budget with yours truly. I am here to help you learn new tricks in the kitchen so that you can save money on your groceries and your food bill. And let me tell you, this is one of my most favorite ways to do this. I have taught this for years. So convenience snacks are just more expensive. They're very convenient. But if your budget does not allow for too many convenient snacks, what you end up doing, what you should do, and what I do, and what I recommend, is to bake your own. And banana bread is a great way to have a hearty, filling, convenient style snack. I'm gonna break all of this down for you, how it works, how to make the perfect base, which I'm gonna teach you here. I'm also gonna talk you through different cooking times. This base recipe is gonna work really well in a loaf pan, in a mini loaf pan, in a muffin, in a mini muffin. All of those have different cooking times, so stick around. We're gonna get into all of that. But this perfect base, you can also add flavors, streusels, glazes, toppings, drizzles. You can really level up the flavor of your banana bread. But for today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect base banana bread. Before we get to mashing the bananas and making the batter, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 350 and lightly grease two loaf pans. The key to the very best banana bread base is using the ripest bananas. So letting them ripen on the counter is best. If you can't get to them in the next day or two, go ahead and put them into the fridge as they're browning like this. So this is gonna be like a very best, like fully brown. This one's a little more yellow, so we're, you know, these are just kind of examples, but these kinds are gonna be the very best. They're the softest, they're the easiest to mash. If they're brown, good. That means it's gonna be sweeter in the end um, without needing to add any extra sugar. So I generally use three bananas when I'm doing a batch of banana bread. So let me just peel these. They're usually very easy to peel once they have gone to that really ripened stage. And the next thing that we're going to do then is really mash these really, really well. I don't really want a chunk of banana when I go to take a bite of my banana bread. I want this mashed banana to really be incorporated into the batter with no chunks whatsoever. So we're going to generally just mash with a fork we're just gonna mash, 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 mash until we get this as smooth as possible. Sometimes you'll catch a stray string. Go ahead and make sure to pull those guys out. We also don't wanna have a bite of banana string in our banana bread. That one somehow escaped when I peeled it. So this part's not quite as ripe, so you really wanna make sure to mash. Mash that really, really well till this is very, very smooth. The riper that it is, the softer it will be to mash, but those other parts, just make sure to get them really well. So next, now that we have the bananas beautifully mashed, I'm gonna transfer them into this larger bowl. I like to mash them in a smaller bowl, and then we're gonna transfer them. My trusty Spinella, y'all know I love this guy. Literally how clean is that bowl? Like, ha, huh, magical. We are going to add in a half a cup of canola oil. I'm just gonna use my spinella. This is a little bit of a thicker batter. And I'm gonna use this to just incorporate this, almost like folding, folding in. For my Schitt's Creek fans, you know your favorite scene, it's mine too. I'm gonna to fold in the sour cream next. This is a half a cup of sour cream. Just lightly stirring. You could use a whisk, but I don't think that's really necessary. Just a few folds and this gets incorporated nicely. Next up is a half a cup of milk. I'm just gonna pour that right in and continue kind of my folding with my spinella. And then I'm gonna do two eggs. I always crack on the counter. You'll get a cleaner crack and less risk of getting any shell into the batter. And I should be able, sometimes a whisk is better for eggs, but looks like this is just fine with my spinella. I also really love melamine mixing bowls, which is what you see here. They just do really well. They're so smooth with batters like this. Any sort of quick bread, muffin, even 
pancake and waffles. I really like to use these bowls. They're just clean and easy to work with and scrape. Last but not least, with the wet ingredients, we have a teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna just mix that in and then we will turn over to the dry ingredients. Okay, first up, two cups of flour and then a third cup of sugar. So I'm just gonna fold this in and then last, I have a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt going in together. Sometimes I'll mix the dry ingredients together and like whisk them up. Other times I'll just really just add them separately like I just did and just really incorporate to make sure that that baking powder especially gets distributed since that's one of our leaveners. This vanilla and this bowl, I mean, just makes for this magical batter. All right, let's get this into the loaf pans and into the oven. While the banana bread is baking, I wanna give you a quick rundown of different types of pans that you can bake this banana bread base recipe in and adjust the cooking time based on the pans. The loaf pans are gonna take about 55 to 60 minutes to bake that banana bread all the way through. It takes longer because it's gonna be taller. But if you're using a round pan, something like this one, a nine inch round, this is a quiche dish, you're gonna do two of these and it's gonna take 35 to 40 minutes to bake that through at 350. If you're gonna use a jumbo muffin tin like this one, you're going to bake for 32 to 36 minutes again at 350. You can also bake the whole batter, so both loaves worth in a nine by 13 like this. It's also gonna take about 32 to 36 minutes at 350. You can also do it in a smaller glass baking dish like a nine or eight inch square baking dish. You'll wanna use two of these, one loaf worth for both dishes, and that's only gonna take about 25 to 28 minutes. With the base recipe that we made that makes two loaf pans, that will generally fit into two muffin tins worth. In this case, maybe one of these and one of these. So if you're using a mini loaf size, that's going to be 25 to 28 minutes. And that mini loaf, again, all these temps are at 350. If you're doing this square shaped muffin tin like this one, that's gonna be about 24 minutes. And it's all gonna depend on how tall, how much batter is in each of the wells. If you're gonna cook them in just a regular circular muffin tin, that's gonna be 22 to 24 minutes. And if you're using a mini muffin tin that looks something like this, these will cook a little faster. We're looking at about 16 to 18 minutes. Again, all of these times are for baking at 350. So giving you these ideas to help you see that you can bake this sort of banana bread base recipe, if you will, in all of these different baking dishes. And of course, if you need them faster, use one of these alternatives. And if you want to do the full hour in the oven for the loaf pan, you can do that as well. Banana bread is done. Don't forget about all the different ways that you can cook this to speed up the cooking time. Before we wrap this one up, I wanted to go over a couple of flavor ideas with you. You can do quick breads that are banana based and have other flavors mixed in. One of our favorites and most popular that we've shared recently is a cinnamon roll banana bread and that's where you add in cinnamon chips. Look for them in the baking aisle at your store or online. And white chocolate chips to give that sort of creamy, cinnamony flavor to the batter. And then you can add a cream cheese glaze. So just powdered sugar, cream cheese, cream or milk mix all that together, glaze it over the top after it is cooled down. If you pour the glaze on top, like a glaze like that, it'll just melt everywhere. There are, however, other ways that you can glaze this and while it's baking. We have a really great caramel banana bread glaze that you can bake the banana bread. I would recommend doing that type of a glaze, the caramel glaze, in a square rectangular dish and then baking for 10 to 20 minutes, adding the glaze and baking another 10 minutes 30 minutes or so to cook all of that through. That way the glaze has a little time to cook down and thicken up on the top of that banana bread. Other quick breads that you could consider doing that don't necessarily use banana as the base, although you can, you could add in lemon, do a lemon type of a quick bread, finely shredded zucchini and drained crushed pineapple 
is also a really great choice for a quick bread. And again, we love making quick breads because they're fast to do, they're cheap to make, they're gonna save you a ton of money. If you can do a batch where you do a couple loaves worth or a couple muffin tins worth, you can then let all of that cool down I usually slice up banana bread and then put it into the freezer in a container or a plastic baggie. You could do the same thing with muffins. Again, let them cool down before you add them into the freezer. Then you have quick grab and go snacks for lunch boxes or just to enjoy in the afternoon. I hope you learned something helpful in this video. Please check out the other videos in the Learn to Cook on a Budget series. You should find them somewhere around here in the playlist on the YouTube channel. You can watch or binge those at any time. We do release new episodes every Wednesday at noon central time, so please subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification through your phone or your email when we release new episodes so you can continue to be learning how to cook in your kitchen.